Hey everyone, it's Pashti Bunto of Acropolis, and today I want to bring you one of my favorite farming strategies. Today we're going to talk about a strategy that is so simple to do that you can literally do it naked if you wanted to. This is a strategy that pretty much every single build can do. And the beautiful thing about the strategy is that you're basically just doing out maps, so there won't be any sort of super difficult content, meaning that you shouldn't have any difficulty no matter where you are in your build. Today we're going to be talking about blight farming specifically. This is a strategy that's going to be very simple to actually do. While it might not give you the highest amount of money per hour, it'll still give you a very respectable amount of money while being one of the simplest strategies to do in the game requiring very little effort on your part. Blight farming has always been pretty decent but this season specifically it's even better as the new scarabs are going to make it substantially stronger and because of this we have ourselves a real winner of a farming strategy that is going to for a lot of people be a really nice strategy to get yourself going once you reach tier 16 and to make a bunch of money and to really get your build put together. So the first thing we should mention here is going to be the atlas tree for the strategy. Now the atlas tree is going to be very simple. We're going to just want to pick up maps of scene, shrines, heist, and blight. Heist is amazing to add just due to you being able to get a lot more free currency. Shrines are great because they make you tankier, they make you faster, and they make you do more damage. And maps of scene is going to be important because we now have tier 17 maps in the game which sell for a lot of money. And at the same time with you having maps of scene, you're going to be able to over sustain meaning you don't need to buy maps. And you can actually instead just sell maps to people for a little bit of additional profit. Now in terms of looking at the tree itself all you're going to need is about 114 points this should be around the point where you reach red maps and that's going to be perfect because the strategy specifically wants to be done in tier 16 maps you don't want to do this in yellow maps or low reds for example just due to both heist and blight being very map tier dependent for the loots that you actually get to be worth something to people in terms of the tree itself all we're going to do is simply start at the bottom and immediately pick up both the shrine and the smuggler's cash chances shrines are going to be in two nodes we're simply going to pick up supplication for additional shrine and a bunch of additional duration and then we're going to come up to the middle and also get ourselves drawn to power and synchronism synchronism is going to make it so all shrines give you an additional shrine for free meaning you'll be able to see the good ones that make you feel really good substantially more often as for heist we are going to want to get ourselves secret sash to get a lot more smugglers caches the dutiful soldier to spawn huck which we'll talk about later in the video we're then going to want to come over to the left side of the tree and get ourselves finer arts for more deception contracts as they're the one that's worth a lot of money and then we're going to want to come to the top and get ourselves no honor among thieves for more smugglers caches and and more pennies as well as chasing the joint for effectively a one percent chance to get a div every time you click on your smugglers caches and a substantially higher chance for blueprints which are all worth around 10 chaos each as for a main farming strategy for blight we're going to want to come down here and get ourselves immune response as well as all the other nodes that aren't spores in the wind as spores on the wind is just completely useless. And one thing I need to mention here is if you cannot handle immune response as it's going to make the blight substantially harder, you can just drop this point to make the blights easier. But I'd highly recommend get used to running immune response as it'll make your blights faster, meaning you do more maps per hour, meaning you make more money. We really want to make sure we get these two small nodes at the bottom as it's going to make doing these a lot easier when you're newer to them. We're then going to go and also pick up fungal bloom for a very large amount of additional blight chance as we need to get to 100 blight chance to not have to use a blight scarab to get blights on our maps we're then going to come over here and pick up epidemiology now unfortunately this wheel and poe planner is just straight up wrong if we look at path of pathing instead we can see that this is what the wheel is going to look like the reason we want this wheel is for epidemiology this is going to make it so any blight chests in our blights are going to have an 80 percent higher chance to give us blighted maps which is going to be where a hefty chunk of our profits is going to come from meaning that this whole wheel is very important to pick up but unfortunately it's just showing up incorrectly in POE planner we're then going to go and also get ourselves 30 construction which means that the blades are going to be easier and it's going to make it so you have a little bit of additional leniency on potentially failing the tower defense and then finally at the top is going to be where a large portion of the money from blights are going to come from first off we have blight spawn which is going to give us a oil extractor which we can use on any anointed jewelry to get a random oil that was used to put that anoint on the item and then we're going to also get ourselves distilled fungus which makes it so any lane that had a blight boss in it is going to drop a guaranteed anointed jewelry item which we can then potentially delete with a oil extractor for golden and silver oils which is where a lot of the money in this build is going to come from finally the last thing to mention is what influence should you do now this tree does have searing exarch influence allocated in it but if you got yourself a few more points you could just pick up the gateway gateway over to the right side of the tree and just pick up eater world if you prefer to do eater world now for searing exarch we don't want to get ourselves light of dawn but if you do want to do eater of world you do need to make sure you pick up the shadow of hunger as it's going to give you substantially more altars next let's talk about the setup and how to actually do the strategy so the maps that we're going to want to run are going to be very specific due to the way blight spawns we want to do a claustrophobic and tiny map over a large spread on map the reason for this being is if you're in a tiny map with the tiny corridors the blight instead of spawning multiple 
multiple lanes is going to combine the lanes into one because it cannot find a valid spawning position. Because Blight always guarantees you that one of the lanes will be a Blight reward lane, which is where the anointed jewelry and where the Blight maps come from. If we were to merge these lanes, that means a lot of lanes are going to merge into the Blight reward lane specifically. And it's just going to double the amount of total chests inside of it. Meaning if your Blight reward lane was supposed to give you two chests and a lane emerged into it, you now get four chests inside. This means that a map like Toxic Sewer is perfect for this build and is the most efficient map to actually do due to the corridors and small hallways in it, basically always guaranteeing they almost always get two lanes all the time, meaning you're going to get the most amount of blighted rewards that you possibly can. Now, the only issue here is that Toxic Sewers is a tier 16 map only if you have four watch zones. What I'd recommend is to potentially go and buy a Maven carry and an Uber Elder carry so you get all of your watch zones unlocked to be able to unlock Toxic Sewer as a tier 16 map to naturally drop in your maps. Now, you don't have to, but I'd highly recommend it as you'll be able to make the money back that you spend on those carries very, very quickly. It's going to more than pay for itself to actually be able to do the strategy in Toxic Sewer specifically. But if you do not want to do Toxic Sewers and you only have two watch zones, which is going to be the minimum that I'm going to expect that you have for the strategy, the other good map to do this in is is going to be silo now silo is going to only be a tier 14 map to begin with with two watch zones and that's going to be fine it's not going to be ideal but it'll be enough to get the ball rolling and it's going to be enough to make you money to be able to afford your watch zones and then you should be able to swap over toxic sewers as soon as you have your two watch zones i can't stress how important it is to do this specific strategy in toxic sewer and the reason that you don't want to just go and buy toxic sewers map is because without four watch zones you can't self-sustain toxic sewers meaning you can't over sustain them to sell them for additional profit why well, i need to mention about silo if you do need to start this in silo before you can afford buying carries for your four watch zones is that you're going to have a harder time selling the contracts from them because they're not going to be item level 83 contracts which is what people mostly look for and it's the thing that people desire so do take that with a grain of salt that you will be making a little bit less money until you can actually do toxic sewers next let's go over these scarabs you're going to want to run first you're going to want to run a cartography scarab for 50 percent increased map chance this is going to work on your natural drops meaning you get more maps stain on tier 17 maps meaning you get a bigger payout out every now and then and it's going to work on the blighted maps from the blight chest specifically meaning you get more blighted maps which are going to also be a very large amount of currency we're then going to pair this with two blight scarabs of bounty which are going to give you a 40 percent chance to open a chest again and this can chain off of each other sometimes you can very easily get six to seven of these openings in a row which feels very satisfying and finally we are going to use a blight scarab of oils which is going to upgrade all the oils to one tier higher that means if you open a chest and you're supposed to get a silver oil it'll be upgrade up to golden oil this is worth very little money right now and because of this it pretty much more than pays for itself every single map that you do meaning this thing is just a currency printer by itself now if you do not have all five slots unlocked you would just simply just drop a scarab of bounty until you can get yourself a fifth slot which i'd highly recommend to do as soon as you can and then you just simply add in a second scarab of bounty into the strategy in terms of the map device all we want to do is simply just click the heist option to put two additional smuggler caches within our maps but if you are doing silos at tier 14 you do not want to use this as those additional smugglers caches are not going to pay for themselves you only want to do this if you are doing a tier 16 map specifically and then we're simply going to be choosing our influence of choice either saving xr or ear world depending on which one you actually want to do and then we simply just put the map in and we go and run it now to add on to this is how are you going to actually be rolling the map they're going to be running the most important thing to mention here is that you need to make sure you do not have enemies cannot be stunned or enemies cannot have their action speed reduced below base value we are going to be using a stun lock combo in blight that's going to permanently make all the blight monsters afk if you have either of these two mods on your map this permanent stun lock combo will not work so you need to make sure every single map you do does not have these two modifiers now figuring this out is going to be very simple all we're going to want to do is just use POE Regex, which will be linked in the description below. POE Regex is just going to allow you to select whatever mods you do not want to see on your map. And as long as you have less than 50 characters used in your Regex, so for example, if I were to remove one or two of these out of here, it will give you a string of text, which you can then simply just copy, go in game, and then simply just paste into your stash tab and it's going to highlight every single map and every single thing that does meet the criteria of this regex that means if something is not highlighted like this map here it means that there is a mod on this map that is going against your regex and you have to reroll it this means all you have to do to set up your maps is just scour them chisel them for 20 percent quality elk them and then just re-roll them until they do pass your regex and have no bad mods on them. Now next, let's talk about how to actually do the blights in your maps as they are going to be done 
in a very specific way. The first thing you need to know is that you need to go and anoint your rings. On one ring, you're going to need to anoint your chilling towers freeze enemies for 0.2 seconds while they're affected by chilling beams. And then on your other ring, you're going to need to anoint meteor towers drop burning ground. The reason for this being is that we are going to be using a stun lock combo to make every single monster in the blade permanently AFK. This means that no matter how strong or weak your build is, you're going to always be able to do blights as all the monsters are just not going to be able to do anything, meaning you can take your time with killing them. The other thing to mention is because, well, they are going to be stun locked and all stacked up on top of each other. The meteor tower burning ground is going to be very strong as it does percent health damage, meaning it's going to kill everything, including the bosses at a very fast rate. Now, in terms of how the blade is going to go, it's going to go like this. As soon as you start the blight, you need to identify where the lanes are going to come from. You have a few seconds to do this, or you can simply just click the skip button by your abilities if you want to immediately start it. You're going to go to either an intersection if there's multiple lanes that are going to be merging together at a specific point, or go all the way up to the portals themselves. And you're going to need to find two tower spots so you can place a stunning tower and a chilling tower next to each other. With the ring enchant that we put on a ring for chilling towers, freeze and enemies for 0.2 seconds when combined with the seismic tower they will be able to chill and freeze and stun all enemies at such a rate to where they never will be able to actually move now what you need to remember here is that you do not want to upgrade your chilling and your seismic towers to the final tier which is the one where you get a choice of two for your next upgrade you simply just want to leave your chilling towers and your seismic towers specifically a tier three as the tier four versions of them are just straight up worse and completely break the stunlock combo once you put yourself a chilling tower and a freezing tower next to each other you can find a spot nearby to put an empowering tower which is going to make them attack faster guaranteeing that the stunlock combo will work even better or if you are okay with the monsters moving ever so slightly you can then just immediately put down a fire tower upgrade it all the way to meteor tower and just watch the meteors just rain down and immediately kill everything with a burning ground you're going to want to do the setup for every single lane in your blight that means if there's two separate lanes coming at your cyst pump at the same time you want to immediately go and set up a chilling and seismic tower set up at one of them and then go and handle the other set by yourself and then eventually build a chilling and seismic tower setup at that portal as well to then permanently freeze both sides from there you'll have basically infinite time to kill all the monsters meaning you can take your time and you're not going to be rushed with the monsters immediately running to your pump they shouldn't be overwhelmed and then you're just simply going to farm the monsters until you get enough points to put down a meteor tower at both of them so then the meteor tower can just kill everything for you this might take you a map or two to get used to to how to do it properly but once you do the sub correctly the rest of it should be a breeze from the blight specific cyst you are either going to give yourself blighted maps, which you just immediately sell for profit, and you are then going to sometimes give yourself oil extractors, which you want to hold on to, and you will sometimes randomly get anointed jewelry. Now, one thing to mention about this anointed jewelry is if you go into your filter on Filter Blade and go to the end game special rares and crafting section of it, go to league specific items and mods, there will be a blight anointed item section on Filter Blade that can allow you to change the way your anointed rings look and they have specifically a module for golden and silver oils this means if you go to blight anointed items which you need to have active for this to actually work and turn off rings and then turn off these two filters all rings that you will see will specifically be rings that have a golden and silver oil anointed onto them unfortunately for amulets this does mean you're gonna have to pick up all amulets manually that's gonna be okay as it's not gonna be too annoying to go through the reason we want to pick up all this anointed jewelry is because we're then going to be able to use an oil extractor on it to guarantee give us a oil based on the oils required if you were to anoint that manually yourself. So for example here, I have a talisman with champion of the cause on it. If I were to price check it with awakened trade, we can see the oils that were actually used for this anoint. That means if I were to use an oil extractor on this talisman of champion of the cause, it will either give me a golden oil a teal oil or a crimson oil for rings is going to be very simple because only the good rings will show through but for amulets you're going to have to price check every amulet just so you can see which oil colors are specifically used in it if a piece of jewelry does have the correct oils all you do is simply just right click your oil extractor and then click on the item you wish to extract from and it'll simply just give you one of the random oils and finally let's talk about the loot that you're going to expect from this now everything we're going to talk about here is going to be super conservative just to look at what this would look like if you aren't being super efficient or if you're being a little bit slower and well if it looks good while being a little bit slower it should look even better if you're being efficient now i ran 20 maps as a sample size which i think for blight is a decent sample size given that it's very consistent and there really isn't any sort of big rng drop to look for and in total i think the loot in my opinion is pretty good so if you look at this stash tab here we can see that the majority of the loot is going to be in three things one we're going to get a lot of blighted maps Two, we're going to get ourselves a lot of scarabs, which we can very easily sell in bulk. 
And three, we're going to be getting ourselves a lot of contracts, which we're going to also be able to bulk sell very easily through the new bulk feature with the rest of the currency in here, just being random bubblegum currency, which you typically would just keep for yourself or you can sell if you really want to. And a bunch of maps and just a few miscellaneous items here and there, such as some Eldritch items or some sort of extra unique items that you might randomly see along the way. Now, in terms of the big loot to look for here, we're mostly going to be looking at these oils as these are going to be the ones that are going to be worth the most amount of money. And I ended up getting myself two golden oils. Now, I did get a little bit unlucky. I did lose. I think three 50 50 oil extractors for a golden oil, which was a little bit lame. But I did end up getting myself seven silver oils and four opalescents, which also sell for a decent amount of money. I also end up getting myself five ziggurat maps, which currently these are only skyrocketing in price as people are getting to T17 maps. When I originally did this the previous day, they were 40 C each. And now when I'm recording the loot video a day later, these are now 65 C each, meaning that this is only getting better with time. Finally, I end up getting myself 27,000 rogue markers, which is about half a div in rogue markers. And in my opinion, I feel like this loot is pretty consistent with exactly you'd see. If we want to take a very quick look at Wealthy Exile, in Wealthy Exile, it says we have 20 div in total in this tab, but that's not completely accurate as these blighted maps, for some reason, specifically Grave Trough, Flooded Mine, and Shrine, are overvalued at 15 chaos each when they're about 5 chaos each. If we were to take these out specifically, we can see that we have 17 div in here worth of loot. If we were to add in the actual value of these maps, that would give us another div in loot, meaning we made 18 div in 20 maps. That means with me running 5 minute maps which i wasn't running five minute maps i was actually running three and a half to four but let's just assume five minute maps meaning i could do 12 maps per hour that means it took me about one and a half hours to actually get all this done meaning my total profit was 11.2 div per hour but again if we want to be conservative and say that some of this stuff won't sell for example you might not end up selling some of the random maps you might not want to immediately go and sell all of your scarabs if you are a little bit lazy and just want to bulk it a little bit harder you might not sell something like your blessed orbs or gem cutters if you want to keep them for yourself but you just say that this is 10 div an hour and at 10 div an hour i think this strategy is just well cracked doing blights is very simple there really isn't much them you just simply stand there and watch your towers do all the work for you and the maps themselves are very simple and they don't actually take any effort to actually do because you're just doing an alk map on top of your blight with this put together i think the strategy is great for pretty much every single player in the game right now that one's a very easy strategy to do and the fact that it's a competitive strategy with pretty much all the other juicing strategies currently makes this a very worthwhile strategy to pursue if you have any questions on anything here feel free to leave a comment in the comments below and i'd be more than happy to help you as soon as i can i also stream on twitch every single day so feel free to come by twitch and ask me any of your questions there and i'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have with that said i hope you kitties enjoy the rest of the day and i'll see you all in the next video